So today we're going to discuss gas stoichiometry. So using the ideal gas that we talked about before with stoichiometry and equations. Before we do that, let's talk about molar volume. Molar volume is 22.42 liters per mole. Usually we look at it as 22.4 liters per mole. This is the molar volume of an ideal gas at 0 Celsius and 1 atmosphere. And we call those values standard temperature and pressure, or STP. So anytime a problem says that something occurs at STP, it's 0 Celsius, or 273 Kelvin, and 1 atmosphere. The molar volume of an ideal gas at STP is 24 point, or 22.42 liters. So anytime it says STP, this should be what you think about for molar volume. So let's look at an example. It says a sample of nitrogen gas has a volume of 1.75 liters at STP. So that means my temperature is 0 Celsius or 273 Kelvin and my pressure is 1 atmosphere. And we want to know how many moles. Now there's two ways to go about this problem. First, you could use the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, N would equal PV over RT, and then you could plug in one atmosphere times 1.75 liters, R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin, and temperature is 273 Kelvin. Now if you calculate all of this out, you should get 0.0781 moles of N2. But since it says that it's at STP, we can also find molar volume. And so we know that we have 1.75 liters, and we know that the molar volume is 22.4 liters in one mole if it's at STP. And so we can kind of use it as a conversion factor, and we get the same exact answer. Okay, so you have a couple options. The reason that second one works is because it is at STP. Okay, so let's do some stoichiometry. So we have quick lime, which is calcium oxide, is produced by the thermal decomposition of calcium carbonate. Calculate the volume of CO2 at STP produced from the decomposition of 152 grams of calcium carbonate by the reaction. Okay, and here's our reaction. First of all, it uh, looks balanced, so we're all set there. Um, let's see, so we want volume of CO2, so volume, question mark, uh, it's at STP, so temperature is 273 Kelvin, pressure is 1 atmosphere. We're decomposing 152 grams of calcium carbonate. So if we want the volume, we know we're going to need moles. So this should be step one. Now the only way that we're going to get moles is through the mole ratio. We know information about calcium carbonate, and so then we can use the mole ratio to get moles of CO2, and then use the ideal gas law to solve for volume. So first thing we need to do is convert our 152 grams of calcium carbonate to moles of CO2. Well, in order to do that, we need the molar mass first. I've already done it. It is 100.09 grams of calcium carbonate, and that's per one mole. And since our equation is balanced and everything is one to one, for every one mole of calcium carbonate, there's one mole of CO2. And I've already calculated this out for you. You should get 1.52, to make sense since we're taking 152 divided by about 100. Okay, so now we have the number of moles of CO2. So now we can use the ideal gas law, rearrange to solve for volume, plug in and get our volume. So we have our moles, which are 1.52, R is 0 0.08206, temperature needs to be in Kelvin, it is 273, and our pressure needs to be in atmospheres, and it is, it's 1. So if we do that math, we end up with 34.1 liters of CO2. Okay, let's look at another example. So we have a sample of methane with a volume of 2.80 liters at 25 Celsius and 1.65 atmospheres mixed with a sample of oxygen gas. So we've got methane, which is CH4. We're mixing it with oxygen gas. We know oxygen on its own is O2. Uh, okay, with a volume, so let's put in, let's see, we've got 2.80 liters, 25 Celsius is 298K, 
1.65 atmospheres. Uh, okay, oxygen gas volume is 35 liters. 0. Uh, 31 Celsius is 304K. Remember, we're just adding 273. And it's 1.25 atmospheres. Okay, the mixture was ignited and it formed CO2 and H2O. Calculate the volume of CO2 formed at a pressure of 2.50 atmospheres and a temperature of 125 Celsius, which comes out to be 398K. First thing we need to do is balance it. And so let's see, we need a 2 here to take care of the hydrogen. And that gives us 4 oxygen, so we need a 2 here. Well, if we want volume of CO2, we're going to need to find the number of moles. Well, the difference with this one is that we've got information about both reactants, and so we need to figure out which one is limiting. And so we need to find the number of moles of both of these. Well, since we've got volume and temperature and pressure, we're just going to use PV equals NRT, solving for N. Okay, we've done that quite a bit, so I'm just going to give you the answers in moles so that we can move on to the next step. So if we do PV equals NRT, solving for N for CH4, we get 0 0.1889 moles. And if we do the same process for our O2, let's see, I've done it for you, we get 1.754 moles. Well, CH4 to CO2 is 1 to 1, but O2 to CO2 is 2 to 1. And so if we take our 1.754 moles of O2 and use our mole ratio for every 2 moles of O2, there's one mole of CO2, and so that ends up giving us 0.8769 moles of CO2. So now we want to compare. If we use up all the methane, we're going to have 0.1889 moles of CO2. If we use up all the oxygen, we're going to have 0.8769 moles of CO2. Well, we're not going to have enough methane to do that, so methane is our limiting reactant, which means that our number of moles of CO2 is 0 0.1889. Now that I have pressure, temperature, and the number of moles, again I can use PV equals NRT, only this time using this information and solving for volume. So V equals NRT over P. So my N is 0.1889. R.08206. T in Kelvin was my 398. And, oh, nice line. My pressure is 2.50. So if I do all of that math, I end up with 2.47 liters of CO2. So it's really important to organize your information. That's why I like doing it underneath the equation, because then you can keep all of your pressure and temperatures and volumes and all that stuff um, organized. Okay, we can also develop a relationship between molar mass and density. Moles is equal to grams over molar mass. If you take molar mass, it's grams per mole. If you rearrange that for moles, it's equal to grams divided by molar mass. So if we take that and plug it in for our number of moles, so it's, here we add moles, here we plugged in, M is representing mass in this case, per molar mass. Okay, we get this. We also know that density is equal to grams, or mass, per volume, or it's usually liters. So if we take that value and plug it in, here we have mass on top, volume on the bottom. So if we take this part and replace it with density, we end up with pressure equals density times R times temperature divided by molar mass. And if we rearrange that, we get that molar mass is equal to density times R times temperature divided by pressure. And we can use that to solve for molar mass. And we'll actually do that in a lab as well. So let's use that with an example. So we have the density of a gas is measured at 1.5 atmospheres and 27 Celsius. Well, let's convert that right to Kelvin. We add 273. That gives us 300 Kelvin. And the density is 1.95 grams per liter. So we want to find molar mass. Okay, well, we already went through how to derive the molar mass equation from 
a combination of molar mass, ideal gas law, and density. So we're not going to do that again. I'm just now that we've gotten it derived, I'm just going to use it. So molar mass is equal to density times R times T over pressure. And so now all I have to do is plug it in. 206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Again, make sure your units are all okay. So temperature in Kelvin, pressure in atmospheres, volume in liters, and then pressure is 1.50 atmospheres. If we divide all that out, I already did it for you, we end up with 32.0034 grams per mole.